Okay, let's pick up where we left off the previous segment. I want to very, very briefly, you can still watch it again if you want, but very, very briefly, I want to talk about this. So this is delta S, the, the entropy change only for a reversible cycle is equal to this. Okay, I want to highlight that. Um, if it is irreversible, now I'll discuss what happens in that particular case. Okay, so in order to, for me to explain to you what is going on, I'll go from state one to state two, okay? But the way that I'll go to state one and two, then I will also go come back from state two to state one, two, okay? And what I want to do is I want to say that this is reversal. I want to say that because I want to make a relationship one to two, not to two to one. So the reverse of it, I'm going to call it reversible. And over here, one to two, I'm going to call it irreversible. But I'm not going to actually restrict it. It can be reversible too. All I want to do is I want to for sure have a reversible return from 2 to 1. That will enable me to get what I need. Okay? So from the previous segment, um, let's do this. If for this particular cycle, I look at this del Q by T. Okay? And that must be, well, let's move up and show you. Um, I said that right here, Clausius in an inequality. This over a cycle will be equal to zero if it is reversible. If it is irreversible, it will be less than zero, right? Right here, okay? So then this needs, needs to be basically like this, okay? But I can also, uh, you know, as I go from one to two, I know my details of my cycle now. I go one to two, del Q by T. And also I go from then two to one, del Q by T, okay? Um, okay. 2 to 1, which is reversible, is right here. I said it, right? But note that this goes from 1 to 2, this goes from 2 to 1, so this will be reversed. It's still going to be delta S, but it will be S1 minus S2, right? This, this will be equal to that. I cannot make any comment about this at this. If this is reversible, 1 to 2, because I said it can be reversible, then what will happen is this will be S2 minus S1, then these cancel, I get myself 0. So you can see I'm still on the same page. If it is reversible, I get 0. If it is irreversible, I get less than 0. Okay? But let's uh, let's write uh, what I have so far. So what it says is uh, 1 to 2 del Q by T plus S1 minus S2, well, needs to be less than or equal to 0, like I said, right? So I want to move things around, so I want to do this, uh, 1 to 2 del Q by T less S2 minus S1, and I want to move things to the other side, just basically multiply by negative sign, S2 minus S1 will be larger than or equal to, and equal to when it is uh, reversible, del Q by T, okay? And I want to write what I said, if reversible, I will be able to write this S2 minus S1 is equal to 1 to 2 del Q by T. Nothing new. I go up to the previous segment. This is exactly what I said. Nothing new in here. Okay. But not, what is new here is if it is irreversible, S2 minus S1 will be larger than 1 to 2 del Q by T. That's what it is. Okay. So this is actually, we can stop right here. You can say that for the irreversible process, this is what we're going to do. But as engineers, we don't like, you know, greater, lower, smaller than, greater than sign. So what we will do is we will gonna kind of make up, a, a, you know, is equal to sign. So we're going to say, again, I'm talking about irreversible. I will have S2 minus S1 will be equal to. So now I'm much more comfortable already. Okay. 1 to 2, del Q by T. And the, the, we are going to call this, the generated entropy, generated entropy right over here, okay? So again, this generated entropy, as you can see over here, if reversible, what will happen to S gen? S gen will be equal to zero for reversible. S gen will be greater than zero when it is irreversible. And if S gen is less than zero, I don't think you're going to get my uh, joke at this point, but you just saved humanity, the, the ultimate fate of the universe, uh, and you're a billionaire too as a side effect, okay? Uh, in other terms, this means it's impossible.
So I also want to look at a special uh, case and I want to actually look into this particular case a little bit, uh, you know, explain it to you a little bit, okay? I'm going to look at the special case and the special case will be isolated system. I talked about this um, in uh, module one. I explained that no heat transfer, uh -huh. no heat transfer, del Q by T, that seems to be zero, no work, uh, okay. That doesn't really impact me. Um, no mass transfer. Okay. So um, looking at this, then what will happen is S2 minus S1 will be greater than or equal to del Q by T. Integral of right, 1 to 2. Um, remember, I also write, you know, if, if I choose to, I can write this this way, 1 to 2 del Q by T plus uh, S gen. And right over here, you can see S gen is greater than zero, etc. So now, what I'm saying is, in this particular case, it's an isolated system. So this guy is zero, right? So the integral of zero will be well. You got it. That that's gonna be gone, right? Or same same thing in here. So this is zero, right? So over here, what I can write is S two minus S one is greater than or equal to zero every single time. So then, if any process S two for an isolated system will be this. This one. So basically, what this says is, you know, again, you may not appreciate so far, but let me explain what's going on over here. I said that, you know, when it is equal to, they are equal to one another for an isolated system, when this is a reversible process. And what did I say in module six about reversible processes? Do they exist in real life? No, not really. I can approach reversible process, but I cannot have a reversible process. I can approach. Okay. So at the best case scenario. The, when I go through a process, the entropy goes, stays the same, or most likely, or in reality, every single time, the entropy will increase. And you're saying, okay, wait, wait, give me an example of an isolated case or isolated system so I can appreciate what, I, what you're talking about here. Well, here's the deal. Universe is an isolated system, okay? If you have additional mass outside of the universe, well, that's not the universe, right? Universe means including everything, okay? And there's no other thing to have work interaction, heat transfer. So universe is an isolated, isolated system. Okay. So then what will happen is entropy of the universe goes up and up every single process that goes through. Okay. And so what does this all mean though? Okay. Entropy it goes up. What is entropy in physical terms? Okay, there's like a letter S. The S goes from 5 to 7. Oh, wow, great. Well, not, not that simple. So the entropy is related to from physical terms. Is a disorganization or randomness? Okay. So uh, I want to actually uh, pick up something that you do know. Um, in order for me to have, let's say that I have a bucket, I have ice in it, right? So when I add heat, Right? Well, it says over here, when I add heat, my S2 will go up. So if I go to, for instance, liquid, my S will be S of liquid, will be greater than S of ice. Okay, this will be smaller. And then I put additional heat and I get myself gas. And this is S of gas. So what is going on over here is, as, the, as I add heat from here, right? Um, you know, you can see this is not an isolated system, so that's not zero. This is a non-zero, so I properly I, can, I should indicate in here, like in here, right? So then the, the thing is, as you know, the ice or a solid is much more compact, right? The atoms are molecules. Liquids are not so much. Gases are completely random and uh, disorganized. So when I heat some, add something heat to the system, the entropy goes up. So the randomness or disorganization of the universe goes up, okay? That is a, a point I want to make. I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, track on to this topic for quite a long time. But I also want to give you an example of something that I didn't discuss yet. And I'll first discuss this, then I'll talk to you about it. Okay, so it's, I said S2 is larger than an S1. Please note that this is only for isolated systems, okay? S2 over here for a general system does not have to be greater than S1, okay? Let me repeat. S2 minus S1 does not have to be a positive. It can be negative. If I'm extracting heat from a system, my S2 minus S1 will be a negative value. Okay? Can be, depending on the S generation. Uh, but S generation is always positive, but I didn't say anything about the S2 minus S1. Okay? And this term can be negative too, depending on the direction of the heat transfer. Right? 
If the temperature goes down, for instance, or heat is extracted from your system, this term will be negative. So then S2 minus S1, most likely it will be negative 2. Okay? So just want to appreciate those differences. S2 is always greater than S1 for a irreversible, isolated system. Okay? Okay, so I want to put some numbers because I'm still kind of uncomfortable, um, you know, how much, uh, you know, uh, clarification I was able to, uh, you know, give because this, this thing is a little, little dense, okay? So I, I, let's say that I'm going to start easy. But I'm going to say that I have a re reversible isothermal process. And I want to be more specific in the process. I mean, compression. I'm compressing this piston. It's a closed system. Right? At the beginning of the segment, I said that we're looking for the claw system, and here it is, right? The most common one that we use is piston cylinder system, right? So let's say that I'm shrinking this by this way, the volume wise. In state one, I have this volume, and I'm like pushing it in, and I'm now going to the half of this volume in, in, in state two, right? And I will, I want to give you some, uh, you know, numbers and isothermal so we can, you know, make some calculations just to illustrate my point. Let's say that this is 95 Fahrenheit, right? And let's say that I have a surrounding in here, and the surrounding is at, I don't know, 75 Fahrenheit, right? Uh, just for the time being. So what will happen in here in reality, if I look at the first law, I'm not going to rehash it. I've done multiple, multiple examples of this, but if I compress this, what needs to be done is the boundary will be negative. So I need to put work in, or somebody like myself, step on it and push it down, right? So then work is coming in. From the first law then, as I have an isothermal process, the temperature um, tries to go up, but it doesn't because it's an isothermal process. So then what it means is there will be a heat transfer out from the system. It has to. Otherwise, the temperature is not going to be an isothermal process. Okay? And I'm making this up just for the time being. 2 BTU per pound mass. And you can see over here what I said. I said BTU per pound mass. So it is, uh, you know, per unit mass is what I'm talking about over here. Okay, and let's let's say that you know just you know, doesn't really matter, but let's say this is air, right? So let's look at this S change of uh, uh, air. Okay, so uh, del Q by T, right? I I did on purposefully for this to be convenient, I said isothermal, right? So I also need delta, right? The the, the S two minus S one of the air. Um, so what will happen is this del Q will be. Um, obviously, I have an integral over here, so, you know, like, uh, 1 to 2, right? But, you know, what happens is, uh, you know, if we're going to take the integral of it, then it will be, you know, the heat transfer throughout this process, which is the Q out, in this particular case. And is, is Q out, uh, think about from the first law, is it going to be a positive or is it going to be negative? Is it leaving the system? It's going to be negative, right? It's going to decrease the energy of the system. So then it's going to be minus 2 BTU per pound mass, and the T will be 95 yeah, is it, am I done? Am I 95? That's it? No. Plus 460. What, where is 460 coming from? I have to convert the ranking, not Fahrenheit, right? Absolute uh, thermodynamic uh, temperatures, right? So now if I do this, you're going to see this is going to be minus 0 0.0036 unit-wise BTU per pound mass times ranking. You may be thinking at this point, uh, hey, he said that S2 will be larger than S1, right? Right here. Well, again, I'm going to, you know, repeat myself many times about that. It's isolated. This is not an isolated system. Obviously, there's a Q, right? So then, this can happen. Okay, so I want to do something else, too. Um, let's look at the delta S of the surrounding, just for the, you know, just for an exercise. Again, if we go through this process, what will happen is, same, same deal. This is going to be now, it's going to be positive, right? The surrounding is receiving the heat. So it's going to be B2 per pound mass, right? Divided by the temperature, temperature will be 75 this time out for plus 460, right? If I do it, you're going to see that this is going to be 0, 0.00, this, is a, this time it's plus 374 BTU per pound mass times Rankin. So what? What is my point over here? Well, here's my point. I'm going to sum up these two, and I'm going to sum up these two too. What is the air plus surrounding? So think about it. Surrounding is, is everything in the universe except that particular system of air that I'm picking, and I'm, I'm including the air. You got it. That is the delta S of the universe. You see what happened to the delta S of the universe? This negative number is smaller than this value, right? So at the end of the day, when I look at it, uh, the S of the universe in this particular uh, compression process went up by 0 0.000, 000 0 0.0000, 138 
BTU per pound mass times ranking. Do you see what happened? I said that uh, the universe is a, a isolated system, and I have demonstrated to you that deltas of the universe uh, increases. Okay, you can reverse this whole thing if you choose to. I don't have energy for that, but you can reverse this instead of a compression. You can do you can do expansion, and you can see that the exact same ta logic applies, and the deltas of the universe always increases. Thank you for watching this segment. It's been a long one.